My only visit to the Obama White House was with Norm Eisen, my colleagues and I, Chris Farrell, Paul Fanides, I don't know who else was there. We went over and visited him. And uh, we got a call in talking about, he wanted to talk to us about the visitor logs. And he essentially told us, you know, we're, you know, don't sue us over this and blah. You're trying to be accommodating to us, but while telling us not to fight them on it. And he said, and I, this is almost a verbatim quote, if you say good things about us, we'll say good things about you, which I took to be like a mafioso type threat. I just couldn't believe it. So we went, went away and sued. Speaking of Biden corruption, I want to move on because uh, this is another big case that Judicial Watch has been involved in over the years. Now, in in uh, nineteen it, during the Clinton administration, we were kind of the first to uncover through litigation. It wasn't through FOIA. It was uh, we sued the White House and Hillary Clinton over the FBI files abuses. And that litigation resulted in discovery showing Secret Service records showing visits. I forget what they showed in terms of visits, but it doesn't really matter. But it, they were kind of high, they highlighted the fact that there were these documents, Secret Service documents that showed visits. So I think we asked maybe the Clinton administration for more documents. And then the Bush administration came in, George W. Bush's administration came in. And uh, so we wanted documents about visits to the Bush White House, Secret Service documents, Secret Service log. We wanted them. And uh, and back then, the Bush administration had a scandal, the Jack Abramoff scandal. He was a a, a lobbyist here in town, and there was Enron and all sorts of scandals. And of course, the left loved that Judicial Watch was asking questions about these. So um, they had to turn over these Secret Service records, and they did not like the resulting press because it was you know because the left media pushed picked it up. Uh, and to me, it wasn't a left-right thing. It was like, well, who's visiting the president? Uh, who was trying to get the government to do favors for their businesses, usually using tax dollars? So the left has interest in that. And it seems to me that people concerned about the spending of tax dollars would have an interest in that. And so the Bush administration hated it. So what they did was they, I, I'm, I, I may legally be off here, but I think I got the story generally straight, is they pretended those Secret Service logs documenting visits to the White House were no longer Secret Service records, that they were, for practical purposes, White House records, and FOIA doesn't apply to the government, uh, to the White House, only to agencies outside the White House. So the presidency, more or less, is protected from having to turn over documents under the Freedom of Information Act. So that walled off uh, Judicial Watch's ability to get these records. Now, a left-wing group kept on pushing the issue and challenging that declaration that the records were no longer public records under FOIA. Uh, but they settled with their own guy in the Obama White House, literally, Norm Einstein. Norm Eisen, excuse me, Norman Eisen. Um, and they had a settlement that they would get the records voluntarily from the Obama White House. And our view is, well, that's ridiculous. Because something is voluntary, a voluntary it isn't enforceable in court, generally. So we sued. Long story short, Judge Garland, who was on the appellate court, came up with a decision that said, no, the White House can do this shell game and keep the record secret. So lo and behold, that judicial watch loss led to these visitor logs not being at least available under FOIA, although the Obama administration was turning them over voluntarily even though they were withholding documents and not really telling us which documents they were withholding, nor could you kind of figure out whether they were even telling you the truth because there was no legal process because it was all voluntary. And I got a funny story. My only visit to the Obama White House was with Norm Eisen, my colleagues and I, Chris Farrell, Paul Fanides, I don't know who else was there. We went over and visited him and uh, we got a call in talking about, he wanted to talk to us about the visitor logs. And he essentially told us, you know, we're, you know, don't sue us over this and blah. You're trying to be accommodating to us but while telling us not to fight them on it. And he said, and I, this is almost a verbatim quote, if you say good things about us, we'll say good things about you, which I took to be like a mafioso type threat. I just couldn't believe it. So we went, went away and sued. So that was our Obama White House story. And uh, 
So the Trump administration comes in and they say, well, we're not even going to voluntarily disclose our visitors. And I objected to that. I was disappointed in that. And of course, no one asked Judicial Watch what we thought. They just announced it. But of course, the law had been set by Obama and Bush. So Bush changed the rules. Obama fought us in court to keep them secret. And then President Trump's White House keeps them completely secret. And um, and they said that, and, and it's a fair point, saying the president has the right to meet whoever they want, and there's a privacy interest and all sorts of reasons to keep the record stock private. And my response is, look, you can protect the presidency while disclosing a lot of information about who's visiting the White House. And it's not as disruptive as you say. If there's a national security issue or something sensitive, the FOIA law allows for those types of records to be withheld. So that didn't obviously carry any water. So now we're during in the Biden administration. The Biden administration says, oh, we're great. We're going to release voluntarily again this, these visitor logs. And they started to release, I think, only a portion of them. Again, there's no scrutiny as to what's not being released, but it's voluntary. So there's nothing you can do about it in court. But someone figured out, specifically a New York Post reporter, that, well, Biden's going home 17 times, has gone home to Delaware 17 times. Is he getting visitors there? And are all those lists going to be released? And the response from the White House this week, Jen Psaki, was no. So talk about hypocrisy. So they have this big uh, brouhaha saying, we're going to release all these records documenting visits to the White House because it's in the public interest that they be released voluntarily, but we're going to withhold records showing visits to the president at his home in Delaware. Now, as I told the New York Post in, in a story that was picked up worldwide, that uh, it makes a mockery of the practice of disclosing the records. What are they hiding? The presidency doesn't stop when he's in Delaware, although I don't know what Joe Biden does when he's not in the White House. As you know, I think he has significant cognitive difficulties. So I guess it'd be best if he's not doing any work when he's not, not actually having to do it. But nonetheless, is, is Hunter Biden visiting? There's a public interest in knowing that. He's in the news again for more corruption issues. But it just shows you the hypocrisy. They don't believe in transparency. Otherwise, they'd be completely transparent. I mean, at least with the Trump administration, you knew where you stood. They said, as a matter of principle, we don't think we should have to release this information for the reasons they say it does. And the law, and they said, pointing to the law supported by Barack Obama says, we don't have to release it under law. Now, many of, and I didn't think that was the transparent way to go, but on other ways, in other ways, Trump was the most transparent president in American history through his tweeting and other kind of forthright discussion of his uh, thinking processes and his policies and how they uh, changed and evolved, sometimes to the frustration of supporters and enemies, but he was, he was transparent about it. Transparent. And here Biden's pretending to be transparent while providing a, a loophole that it could, you could drive a big Barisma truck through, if you know what I mean. So uh, that's that's where we stand on Biden. Now, I don't know if we can get those records under law. You know, maybe our lawyers will take another look and see if we can come up with some other way to get access to the information. But just remember, Biden's pretending to be transparent while actually not being transparent. I guess that's not a surprise. And, you know, hypocrisy isn't limited to just politicians you like. Uh, sometimes they're uh, you dislike there. You, you sometimes get that a lot from politicians that you may like. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.